anybody watching. So this is Melissa, the insurance exam queen, and we are doing a life and health game night. And but as we get started, we're waiting for people to come on in. I have a question in the chat box about um, studying for Alabama and Brianna, let me, you're doing both life and health. So, and by the way, I, so I'm struggling a little bit with my mouth. <laughs> um, I am pregnant and 20 weeks pregnant, about halfway there. And apparently one of the things that can happen when you're pregnant, especially if you're low on iron and anemic is you can get tongue ulcers. So like right now my tongue has like just sores all over it and it doesn't change, like not talking doesn't change it. If anything, I'm distracted when I'm talking. So I am drinking. I found a remedy came to me in my head. Thank you. Ancestors divine team for giving me the answer, but, um, <clears throat> I have hot water and I put peppermint in it and it just immediately soothes the soreness um, in my tongue. And I also have one on my lip um, <clears throat> and I have a solution, which is to take iron supplements and some B12 supplements. But I, I kind of, I'm a little bit struggling or like, it's hard for me to swallow sometimes. So I just wanted to explain <laughs> why, <laughs> why I'm having issues with my mouth. <laughs> um, let's blame the, the baby. God, I can't swallow right now with the, with the progestogen. Um, but yeah, and honestly it started with the gums too. And the gums are better now. Now it's just the ulcers, um, on my tongue. So yeah, the babies do take all the nutrients. So what I'm going to share with you right now, let me get this pulled up here. And this is something everybody can do. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Actually, let me just bring up a new tab so I can show you. Okay, so one second here. I'm going to share my screen. And let me pull the participants back up. Again, people are joining in as we come in. So we'll be playing a game night here in a second, um, but I'm just answering some questions um, as people are coming in before we get started. So Brianna asked about an Alabama life and health breakdown. Now, what I'm about to show you works for everybody in any state. Anyone can do this. Now, to clarify, I don't recommend the company I'm about to show you necessarily. Not that the, I actually worked for them for four years. So they're great and all, but um, I prefer Excel um, for their pre-licensing course. <clears throat> they have a better practice exam that is more in alignment to the state exam. But I like the way that exam fx lists out the exam breakdown so what you would do is you would just go to their website examfx.com and then you go to insurance view state requirements and then they have every state listed here so we're going to look at alabama and it will tell you if there's any requirements that you have to do it'll tell you how to get your license um, and then it'll tell you what the exam will be like. And then it gives you the exact breakdown of what you're going to see on your state exam. So this is the Alabama life only, Alabama health exam, and then the Alabama life and health exam, which is what you're taking, Brianna. So this is the breakdown of your exam. And it's showing you 20% of the test will be about general insurance. That's awesome. General insurance is mostly definitions. And my YouTube channel is has two videos all about general insurance. I mean, I have a lot of videos on general insurance, like little snippets, but I have two very long videos on general insurance on my YouTube channel. I'll show you that right now so you guys can see that. So don't forget, I have you know a YouTube channel that offers a lot of free tutorials and stuff. So if we go to my videos, and you go to um, playlist, you, more playlists will pop up here that are unavailable to you, but go to the general insurance playlist. So general insurance terms. And, and on this, there are two videos, general and, and see they're the longest videos, an hour long and 52 minutes. So that's general insurance conversational audio. And this is where I Hello, explain the insurance exam queen and this is the so I actually give you the words and then I explain what they mean in the conversational one 
And then in the memorization one, I Hello. do the same Brand thing, Brand. except I repeat myself three times with the definition that you should memorize. So I would, since, since in Alabama, 20% is general insurance, these two videos you want to be watching all the time. And they're also, I put them in my, and, and not everybody, by the way, who's in this room taking your life and health has general insurance. Half of you don't, but in Alabama, she does. So I'm recommending these two. So general is 20%, mostly definitions. That's easy to get. Then you've got life policies at 12%. That's focus on term versus whole when it comes to uh, life policies. Provisions is 20%. That's super important. And what's really cool is that life provisions is going to overlap with health provisions. Now that's only 4%, but um, you know you might, you might as well get 4% of the questions correct. And then the rest of the chapters are pretty small. So you really got to focus. You have three heavy hitters here which are going to give you 52% of the exam. And then across the rest of these, you need to secure, um, what is that, 12 more points to get a passing with the two biggest chapters being Medicare, Medicaid, and Health Foundations, which is just like health basics. So you kind of have a little bit of a tricky breakdown with that they have. It's nice that they are heavily loaded into the first three chapters. But then you see from here, you've got to know a lot of, you got, there's a lot and you got to know a little bit from each one to be able to secure a pass. Now that's like in Alabama. Then we had um, another state. So Indiana, let's look at Indiana. Chica's taking Indiana. She doesn't have, and I'm pretty sure it's a Pearson breakdown. Yeah. So she doesn't even have general insurance at all. Um, and I think Chica, you're doing just life. Is that correct? You're not doing health. So in, in her, she doesn't have general insurance at all. She starts with completing the app, which is also, which would be called uh, field underwriting or, or life basics on the Alabama side. And so your breakdown is going to look a little bit different. But for anybody who's studying, again, you just go to examfx.com. You go to insurance, view state requirements, click on your state. I know we had somebody in Florida. You can scroll down, see the exam breakdown. The bigger the percent, the more important the chapter. So like on this, in Florida life right now, you don't really need to know taxes and retirement, but you do need to know provi provisions, Florida state law, um, completing the app, you know, stuff like that. So that's where you can go to see your breakdown. Um, it's examfx.com. And again, they are a great pre-licensing provider. I worked with them for four years. It's where I got my industry knowledge from and where I you know, was teaching for all the major insurance companies and they requested that I be their instructor. So I was the most requested instructor at examfx. Um, and I would just teach, I taught all over the country. <clears throat> so, but I actually recommend Excel um, because I like their practice exam. They have a similar website. The only thing is it's a little bit harder to read. It's a little bit harder to understand. Like when you go look at their breakdown, um, they've got all these charts and stuff. And so like they have the test across the top and like, sometimes you see a zero and it's like weird, or it just, it's, you, you it, it's not as easy to read <laughs> as the other one is. So that's why I use exam FX for the exam breakdown, but I would recommend Excel for your pre-licensing course. And if you don't already have a pre-licensing course, if you buy the Excel and you use coupon code queen at checkout, you will get 10% off and you will be enrolled into my class series for free. Um, and then also another tidbit is you can also do something like this. Um, where we look at Alabama, Everyone can do this, Al A B A M A, life and health insurance exam content outline. So whatever state you're in, you search the state, the test, and then put in exam content outline. And then you click on, it's usually the first one that you, you pull up. And this is going to give you, it tells you, the topic 
the topics that are under it, not, not always, Alabama's looks a little bit different than I've seen, but it tells you how many questions are coming from these topics. Um, this is actually a really nice breakdown. This, one, this one's a little bit more detailed than I've seen some other states, but like this is what I do when I figure out what, what I should put in the classes as I look at what are the content, what, what shows up on the content, what are you likely to be asked about? One of the things that people always struggle with is right here, and this is such a perfect example, I, I need to grab a picture of this, is um, when you're studying in your online course, you're going to learn about life insurance. And they ask you about, you know, term versus whole. <clears throat> and they ask you about, you know, universal life and things like that. And I always tell everybody to focus more on term versus whole than on universal because it's more likely to show up on the test. And this right here proves it to me. So look in Alabama right now. It says term and whole life is 11 questions where adjustable, universal, and variable, and equity is only three. So I always tell term versus whole, that's the major most tested topic and what just beautiful proof that we have right now that we can see that in Alabama. And that's pretty much true across the board. Not again, you will have a question about universal. You will have a question about variable, but only a handful of them compared to learning about term um, versus whole. So that's really cool to see that. So that, and again, you can do that in any state. So again, if we were to do, you know, um, if we were to do Florida, any state that you plug in for a DIA and you can get the exam content outline. So this one looks a little bit different where it just gives you the chapter and the percentage. It doesn't kind of break it down as much as Alabama did. But you can see these are all the tested topics. These are all the things that will show up, potentially show up on the, the state exam. And so anybody, anybody can search this and see this. This is where I get my information from. This is how I tailor my classes is I analyze these content outlines. I pick the most tested topics across all of the states and I put that content in my classes. And then also just based off of my own personal experience with having taught and having been the most requested. And I'm the most, I was the most requested because my pass rates were so high, right? Like when you took, I, insurance companies like United Healthcare in Wisconsin, that was one of the places I went to the Green Bay location quite a bit, is they would have me come in on Monday and Tuesday, teach the class, and people would take and pass their state exam by Friday. That's how quickly I can get people through. If I'm in front of you for eight hours a day teaching you the content for two days, you can then pass by Friday. And that's what I offer in my class series. So if anyone is also unfamiliar, so my YouTube channel is for free and there's all kinds of stuff there, but I also have my website. I need to open it on a different thing actually, because otherwise it'll, it'll go to um, the admin side of things. But you can go to my website, insuranceexamqueen.com. And right now for life and health, I only have two options. I have the silver royal treatment, which is going to give you, I think it's close to 20 hours of video right now. And most people are able to pass the exam. Like property and casualty has, has multiple levels. We have gold, silver, and, and bronze because um, it's a little bit harder with the PNC exam. And so I offer some different levels. With life and health, everyone is finding great success with the silver um, treatment. I am creating a gold class series right now, but what's, a, um, <clears throat> what's currently available is the silver treatment for $57. And that you can see the course curriculum when you click on it. I've got life and health notes. I've got a four hour life class. I've got a life class that goes into term whole annuities provision. We've got um, health underwriting. We got a four hour health class. We got a two hour health class, long-term care, Medicare, state law. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff. And then the platinum life and health gives you silver um, and it gives you uh, a sales class that we have because <clears throat> platinum, you get everything when you join platinum basically. And platinum gives you everything I have all past recordings that have not been released to the public yet, like the classes that I'm using to make gold are inside of platinum. And 
Platinum means that you get to talk directly with me as you study. So like in my Platinum group right now, I think Chanel, she's in here. Um, she is posting questions in the Platinum chat saying, I got this wrong on my test. Can you please explain it to me? And I- It's been really helpful, honestly. Yes. A lot of the stuff that the state or that Kentucky is a weird state and they give you a lot of information and I can't figure out what's actually important. But I think one of the biggest things is just knowing, okay, they're asking you 12 questions about this thing that makes no sense to you. It doesn't have to. Here's what you need to focus on. Yep. So that's I that's been really needed. Yes. And I will always tell you, like, that is not worth your time. Like, don't like taxes, not worth your time. So that's one of the things that makes me different from places like Excel, Kaplan, whatever. They've got to teach you everything that shows up. I teach you what you're going to actually see um, on the exam and what you know you need to pay attention to, what doesn't matter so much. Um, so when you when you get platinum, you'll get silver plus the ability to talk to me, plus all past recordings of life and health boot camps that have not been released. Um, and you get invited to any class for free, which is another thing I wanted to bring up. I actually am hosting a life and class, life and health class this, this weekend, uh, or on Monday, I mean, so it's the life and health, listen and learn. So I'm going to drop this link in the chat box right now. We're going to start our game here in a minute, but I got off on the side tangent of showing you breakdowns and stuff, but this is the only, when I do a listen and learn. It's the only time that I offer a discount. A normal boot camp day with me is $99 because I'm explicitly following the exam content outline and like teaching like definition, 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 definition. I actually want to kind of get away from teaching like that though and create lessons that are more cohesive because like there's times where it's like you learn something like for, for instance, whole life policies. When you're studying whole life, you learn about whole life in the types of life chapter. And then you learn like the rules about whole life in a whole other chapter. I try to teach them together. And the listen and learns are where there's no set agenda. Like I'm not, like I won't say you're gonna learn this, this, and this by the time you leave today because it's me kind of experiencing the content and playing around with it but the lessons are solid and amazing. Like whatever you do end up getting, you will, whatever you I do end up teaching that day, you're going to understand it. Like no other, like you will get it. Like it'll be locked in. Um, and I've had so much incredible feedback from the listen and the learn lessons. So it's going to be this Monday, the 20th. Um, and it's, the one of the things with the $57 is because again, normally it's $99 for a full day with me, but there, there will be no recordings. So you do have to show up, but at the same time, you know, you can hop in and out because again, it's not like a set agenda. So even if you're only able to attend the morning or the afternoon, it's still extremely worth it. And anyone who has platinum gets a ticket for free. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you, the, the listen and the learn, and I put the link in the comment and there also is a Facebook event for that as well. Okay. So let me check the chat box. Um, so grateful for running the queen. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Um, and I saw there was a big question. Do you have any information or videos that are geared towards agents who have passed their state exams? Just a kind of awesome you passed, but now what tutorial or more in depth regarding agent. Okay not really, not yet. Um, I would need to partner with somebody about that because honestly, like my expertise is the exam and that's it. Like that's the ending point for me. Um, one, a majority of a big group of people already are working with someone. They already have an employer and they don't have those questions because the employer will take care of it. But there is a good, you know, subsect of people that are doing this themselves and they want to work for themselves. And what path do you need to take for that? I do eventually want to get in some support for that. And I plan to, but as of right now, I don't have any information on that. Like a guy in the group the other day asked for a video on how to get um, appointments with insurance companies. And I'm like, I don't really know how to do that. I always worked for an employer who did that for me. So, but I can help you pass the exam, right? I'm called the exam queen, not the insurance queen. <laughs> the insurance exam queen, um, because that is my realm of um, expertise. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the game. So what, uh, let me close these out here just so we can remove our bandwidth. Okay, so how this is gonna work is, you, like I said, it's easier to have the game on a computer and then you're gonna answer on your phone. So if you can have what I have right now, a laptop that I'm looking at and a cell phone in my hand, that is the best way to be able to play. You're gonna wanna go to, just like it gives instructions at the top, it says join at www.kahoot.it, or you can scan the QR code. Then it's going to ask you for the game pin, which is right here, the 9287003. You're going to enter that. And then it's going to ask you for your name and nickname, whatever. You can put in whatever name you want. Just, you know, don't be like crazy inappropriate where I have to kick it out. I mean, I love being inappropriate, but this is going to go on YouTube, you know, so we got to be a little bit appropriate. Put in whatever nickname you want. Then as we play the game, what's going to happen is a question will pop up on the screen and you'll get a chance just to read it. Then the screen will change and the question will go on top. And then there'll be four answer choices that go to a color. So like A will be blue, B will be, you know, red, uh, C will be green, whatever. And then you pick your answer, like you see the answer on the screen, but then you select it on your phone. And your phone will just have the four colors. So like if you say, oh, the answer is A, yellow, on your phone, you're just going to click the yellow square. Now, if you're unable to play along or you don't have two devices, that's totally fine. Just play with us, write down your answer or make note of your answer in your head and then see how well you did. So whether you're able to physically play the game with us or not, you can absolutely follow along. And that's what anybody on YouTube um, should be doing as well is just simply follow along, um, testing yourself to see how well you do. And then, like I said, there's so much learning that happens in these listen and learns because I will explain the answer. And again, for anybody new, I am kind of struggling with my tongue right now. I'm pregnant and I'm anemic and it means that I have uh, ulcers on my tongue. <laughs> so I'm drinking warm peppermint water, which um, eases the pain, but there's moments where I'm like, and it's because my tongue. <laughs> so I just want to, uh, I just want to clarify that because um, <clears throat> I'm not normally like that, but my, it's, but it doesn't change to talk or not talk. So I'm very happy to be here. Um, but I just have some, like, it's, it's just, my tongue is just painful right now, but sipping the peppermint water totally, totally eases the, the pain, but it is a little bit swollen and it makes me hard to like swallow sometimes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes, not a few minutes, like just 30 more seconds so or so to go ahead and pick your answer. And then we're going to hit or sign in. Now, if for any reason you get kicked out, um, the game pin will still show at the bottom. So you're able to um, you're able to join back in again if you happen to get kicked out. And then again, if your technology is not working or it's going too slow, just simply follow along, pick your answer in your head confirm to see if you get it right. Um, and then we'll go on. I can't get on the laptop, but I'll be playing on the phone. So if you only have one advice, one device, it's going to be hard to do that because you have to have two separate screens. You have to have the screen you're watching me on, and then you have to have the screen where you put the answer in. So just play along with us, but don't try to actually log in because that would be really hard for you to do. All right. Okay, so final, anybody, speak up. Tell me if you're still trying to come in. Otherwise, I'm going to hit start here. Speak now, forever hold your peace. I'm going to hit start unless you tell me you're trying to log in. Okay. All right, and then I need to, I want that pulled up so I can see if anybody, and if you get kicked out of the entire Zoom meeting, it does give me a warning that you're in the waiting room. So I'll just add you back in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And I'm going to turn on the music too, because Kahoot comes with fun music. Okay, we're doing health provisions, by the way. But even if you're studying life, so many of these provisions are the same. Where would the insured look to see their rights for cancellation? Where's my music? Here we go.
This is such a tricky one. Um, so first, let me explain. If you're taking the life only exam, some of these will apply to you and some won't. Um, but the reason I chose health is because there are more health provisions that overlap with life than there are life provisions that overlap with health. So I'll always tell you if this is a health only question, and this one is specifically a health only question. Maybe, maybe, no, maybe, no, because life, life, I've never, I don't think I've seen this one on a life exam. But okay, let's talk about this question. So most of you got it wrong. In fact, none of you got it right. And I love it. And that, that's the reason why I put this, this question in here is because we always mess it up. And that's because it's so tricky. And it says, where do we look to see their rights for cancellation? Our brain will go, well, the cancellation clause, like that just seems to make sense. But there is nothing anywhere in the policy that is called the cancellation clause. No such thing exists. That is a fake made up term. Never choose cancellation clause. It is never an answer. It is made up. And that is something that we need to be conscious of is that, and, and this is what, what trips people up sometimes is they'll read a question and they read four choices and they're like, well, I never heard these two things. I don't know what these two things are. And then you begin to hyper-focus on it. But the thing is you need to remember is there can only be one right answer. And it is very possible that the three other choices listed are made up terms, are things that don't exist. And it's crazy to me that I'll have a student who says, I saw this acronym on the exam and I don't know what it means. And oh my God, that, that's the reason I failed. I'm like, no, they had to make something up. <laughs> like if you don't know what the word means, if you've never seen the word in your studies, it's probably made up. So don't stress when you see answer choices and you don't know what it means or you've never seen that word or you don't know that acronym, throw it away. It's not one of the right answers. It's not something to worry or, or stress about. Because um, I mean, I even had somebody in the Facebook group the other day who did that. Like, oh my God, look at these four choices. I have no idea what these other words mean. And I'm like, that's because they're made up. They don't exist. <laughs> so keep remember of the four choices, three of them have to be wrong. Three of them can be completely made up terms that don't mean anything. Cancellation clause is one of them. It's a tricky because it sounds right. It sounds good. But here's the thing about the policy is it's not about cancellation so much as it's about renewability. Renewability is your right to keep the policy going, but sometimes you don't have a right to renew. Sometimes policies are non-renewable and you're not allowed to continue to renew. But the place in the policy to find that out is still called rights of renewability. So you'll have a section in the policy called rights of renewability and it may say you have no right to renew. This policy will end when the term is over. And if you want a new one, you're going to have to issue a new one. You can't keep this one going. So rights of renewability is where you would find also your rights for cancellation. So it, um, <clears throat> nothing, nothing is ever cancellation clause. That's a bad, false answer. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And this, again, like I said, I'm pretty sure this one is health specific, but there will be a lot of overlap between life and health in this uh in this game. All right, next up. When can the wording to a provision be changed? Ooh, okay. So let's talk a little bit about provisions. So provisions are, I like to think of provisions as like, this is how we do it. It's just, we set up the policy like this. Like I even like seeing the song, this is how we do it. It's just a way that we do the, it's, I don't, I don't love the word rule, but that's kind of the closest real life definition that we can think about with the provision. It's just, this is how the policy is set up. We have this in it. So like, for instance, one of the provisions is a free look period. 
And the standard across the board, and by the way, this is also what I'm about to explain to you is very testable, especially for the health exam. The insurance companies um, are writing policies in like all 50 states. It's like United Healthcare, when they sell insurance, they're not selling it just in Wisconsin, they're selling it everywhere, right? But every state makes their own rules and laws. That is a, that is a test question. Who runs insurance? The state. S insurance is a state run thing. It is not run by the president or Congress. Insurance is not at the federal level. There are some federal level insurance like Medicare, but on the day-to-day -day average, your regular life, health, car insurance, homeowner's insurance is dictated by the state. So insurance is a state-run thing. So when United Healthcare is trying to sell policies across all 50 states, there are 50 sets of rules that they have to follow. 50 sets of rules that they have to follow when they're, so they may have like, we're gonna sell one you know disability policy and because we're gonna sell it in all 50 states, there are 50 sets of rules. This can get a little complicated for companies like United Healthcare trying to sell across all 50 states. Now, part of insurance being a state run thing is that every state has what is known as a department of insurance. So there's a department of insurance that is like the, the manager and president of insurance in your state. So when I think of a department of insurance, I think of it as like the president and Congress for insurance, but it's specific to your state. So there's the Texas Department of Insurance, the Arizona Department of Insurance, the California Department of Insurance. Sometimes they have different names. Like I think Florida and New York have slightly different names, um, but they all, they all have a department specific to running insurance. The manager, the head, the top dude at the Department of Insurance is typically known as the commissioner, the director, or the superintendent. So every state kind of has different names. Florida even has a much weirder name. But the commissioner, director, or superintendent, commissioner being the most common name. So there are 50 commissioners, essentially. And when they all get together, they call themselves the NAIC, National Association of Insurance Commissioners. And many of you will see that abbreviation throughout your studies, and no one's probably ever explained it to you because it's not necessarily a testable point. You won't be asked, what is the NAIC? But they refer to it a lot. So that's what the NAIC is, is it's all the commissioners from all 50 states, basically all the presidents of insurance from each state. And they get together and they call themselves the NAIC. So insurance is state run. And every state has a person who is like the president of insurance in that state called the commissioner, superintendent, director. When they are, when they got together, they decided to create a law called the Uni Uniform Individual Accident Policy and Provisions Law. And you don't need to know that necessarily, but I know that because I do this stuff. And they decided to pass a law that says every state and every policy must have do, do, do these provisions, like the free look, the grace period, um, I don't know, time limit on certain defenses. There's a bunch of them where basically every commissioner across every 50 states said, we agree that all of the policies must have these provisions. And the goal of this is to make it easier for insurance companies to be able to sell across all 50 states. So there is a thing called the United Individual Policy Provision Accident, blah, 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 whatever. And it basically just means that every state, every policy has to be issued with certain uh, rules to it, provisions to it. So these provisions were written by the NAIC, by the commissioners of every state. And this question is asking, when can the wording to a provision be changed? Now, this is a testable question. Can insurance companies change the wording to a provision? Yes, they can. However, they are only allowed to change it 
when it makes it better for the customer, not worse for the customer. So one of the most common provisions and a very highly testable provision for both life and health is the free look period, also known as right to examine. The free look period is, is a time that the insured gets the policy in their hand and they can look at it and decide if it's truly for them. And if they decide that they don't want the policy, they return it for a full refund. So you buy it, you pay for it, but then you get it and you read it and you realize, never mind, this is not for me. When the customer returns it during the free look period, they will get all of their money back and it's as if the policy never got started. If a customer were to wait till after the free look period, they would not be able to get all of their money back. It would be prorated based on the days that they were insured. So they could cancel going forward, but they won't get all of their money back. The only way to get all of your money back is to cancel during the free look period. And that's one of the provisions that's on every policy, both life and health. The standard decided number of days is 10 days. So the free look period in most everywhere for every policy is 10 days. So an insurance company, when it says, when can the wording to a provision be changed? An insurance company would allowed to be, would, al would be allowed to say, well, our free look period is 15 days. They're making it better. They're giving more time, extra time to the customer to look at their policy and return it for a full refund if they don't like it. But what an insurance company would not be allowed to do would be to say, well, our free look is only eight days. They're making it less favorable. They're removing two days from the customer and less time for the customer to review their policy and decide to return it or not. So when can a provision be changed? When it's better for the customer. And they tend to use the word favorable. And they can ask this question from both angles. So they can say, when can the wording be changed when it is more favorable? But they can also ask you, when can't the wording be changed? So you have to pay attention. Are they asking, can the wording be changed or can't the wording be changed? If this question said, when can't the wording be changed? The answer would be when it's less favorable. So you have to be prepared to answer it from both directions. When can they change it? When it is more favorable. When can't they change it? When it is less favorable, okay? Now, a little asterisk here. Um, the free look period is 10 days across the board. There are state specifics. So your state may have a different number. Two other policies that generally have a 30-day free look period are long-term care and Medicare. But that is also well, not um, long-term care. That's only in Massachusetts. Uh, or no, is it Medicare? Me Medicare and Medicare supplement have a 30-day free look. Yeah, pretty sure. Long-term care, I think, has a 30-day free look in Massachusetts only. But again, don't quote me on that. Because again, I'm not, I don't have every state specific memorized, <laughs> um, but 10 days is standard. But for Medicare, definitely Medicare, it is 30 days free look period. And the and and I think long-term care too. Pretty sure, long, oh my gosh, I'm struggling here. It's been a minute since I talked about it. <laughs> but I'll double, I'll double, double check. But I'm pretty sure, because normally my memory trick for that is the elderly, that's who gets Medicare, that's who gets long-term care is the elderly population. And my memory trick is always saying they get more time. But again, this is, can all be very state specific. So 10 across the board, but always double check your, your specific pre-licensing course for your exact numbers, okay? So again, when can a provision be changed? When it is more favorable? When can't a provision be changed? When it is less favorable. All right. And awesome. Uh, uh, HM says, thank you for explaining it. I now understand. <laughs> Hannah says, thank you for your in-depth explanations. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is why I'm very passionate about this stuff. I love to teach this stuff. I love to explain this stuff. And this is the type of stuff you get when you get my class series. So like 
YouTube is like little teasers, little bites of information. If you want that more in-depth explanation, that's what you're going to get when you get my, my classes. All right, next question. What value does the insured bring? This is true for both life and health and even property and casualty, by the way. Okay, so with this question, um, this, so promise to pay is actually, if this, if this had an ER, if this was on the side of the insurer, promise to pay would be correct. But this is an ED, this is insured, which is customer. One of the things you always got to pay attention to, because this is, this is the difference between a 68 and a 70, is I didn't pay attention to the ED or the ER. The Insured, da, 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 the insured is the customer. They are dependent, D, dependent upon the insurer. The insurer, ER, is the company. They are who you call when you're in an emergency, ER room. You go to the ER in an emergency. When you have a medical bill, you go to the ER. You want them to pay for it. You want the insured to pay for it. So that's just a memory trick to make sure you pay attention between ER and ED. Because if you if you read too quickly when you're taking your test and you read insurer instead of insured, you're going to get the answer wrong. This said, what value does the insured bring? The And by the way, the insured never makes a promise. Going back to the idea of uh, unilateral. Unilateral is a test question, uh, a definition that you need to know, and it'll probably show up here. Well, probably not in this test, but unilateral is a unique concept about insurance exams. And unilateral says that only one side is making a promise, that the contract, insurance contracts, health insurance and life insurance contracts, even property and casualty, all insurance contracts are unilateral. And what that means is only one side is making a promise. And the one side making a promise is the insurer, the company. The company is promising that if you crash your car, if you get a medical bill, if you die, we will pay the claim. The customer is not making a promise ever. The customer never promises the insurance company anything. We pay our premium or we don't. And if we don't pay our premium, the policy cancels. We never promise, I cross my heart, I will pay my premium. There's no, there's no legal requirement that you make a promise to the insurance company. So this is, again, going back to unilateral. So unilateral says only the insurance company is making a promise. It's a one-sided promise. The customer, the insured who is dependent upon the insurer, ER, is not making a promise. So, and then another thing about unilateral is a one-sided promise and only the insurer, only the company is legally obligated to do anything. A customer is not legally obligated to do anything. The insurance company is like as a customer, if I fail to pay my premium, they simply cancel and move on. They don't take me to court. They don't sue me for not paying my premium. On the flip side, if the insurance company fails to pay a claim, a valid claim, you can sue them. You can take the insurance company to court and before a judge, and if the judge agrees that they should have paid the claim, he will make them pay and then they have to pay. A judge can force an insurance company to pay a claim if they deny it and it's a valid claim. So unilateral says only the insurer is making a promise and only the insurer is legally bound to do anything. So we kind of went off on a side tangent there, but since seven of you said promise to pay for insured, I really wanted to make sure, no, no, no. The insured, the customer never makes a promise. 
The insured, the customer never makes a promise. Now to this question though, let me check the chat box. Um, okay. Um, now this question says, what value does the insured bring? This is going back to the idea of consideration. So when you have a, an insurance contract, unilateral is one of the unique features about an insurance contract, but there are four elements to an insurance contract that makes it a legal contract. And, and every legal contract has to have these four elements. So even if it's like a rental application, like, like I, I, a lease for an apartment, a, a lease for an apartment has to have these four elements. A job contract would have to have these four elements. Any legal contract has to have four things. This question is specifically asking about consideration. So there's four legal elements to a contract, agreement, consideration, competent parties, legal purpose. Consideration is a concept that says both parties, the insured and the insurer, the company and the customer have to bring value to one another. So both sides of the contract, both parties of the contract have to bring value to the other party. Like why, why would we get an insurance policy if we're not receiving value? And why would an insurer give us insurance if they're not receiving value, right? We don't set up contracts unless we're both getting a value out of it. So that is what consideration says. Consideration says both sides must bring value to the other side. And that is a test question. What does consideration mean? Both parties must bring value to the other party. Then they're going to ask you, what is the value? What? But they won't actually use the word value. I use the word value to help you get started. But they're actually going to ask this question as, what is consideration on the side of the customer? Or what is consideration on the side of the insurer? So you have to remember consideration, value, consideration, value, consideration, value. So when they say, what is consideration on the side of the customer or what consideration does the insured bring? Well, the insured brings an application which has all of their risks on it and the money that we're willing to pay for the insurance company to take those risks. So, because insurance, the definition of insurance is the transfer of risk. All the risks of me having medical bills, I transfer it to the insurance company. And here is the money that I'm paying you to take those risks from me. So the value that a customer brings, the consideration that a customer brings to the insurer is all of our risks via the application and the premium that we're willing to pay for them to take those risks. Now, what value does the insurer bring? They bring the promise to pay. They're, the value that we get from the insurance company is a promise that if we have a medical bill, if we crash our car, if the house burns down, if we die, then, then they will pay a claim. We only get a promise because there are times you may buy, like if you have not had a car accident in the, less, the last six months, you didn't get anything from your car insurance. You got nothing other than the peace of mind and the security that if something happened, they would have paid. We only get a promise from them. And then, then they got to make good on their promise and they are legally obligated to make good on that promise because con insurance contracts are unilateral. <clears throat> All right, so let me check the comments here. Um, I remember this as C-L-O-A-C, insurer is, insurer is promised to pay, insured is at plus premium, yes. And I actually draw a chart out in my classes um, and give you some memory tricks to help remember the difference. Um, this, the, the, the insurer and the ED, yes. Pay attention. Are they asking about the insurer? The insurer is the company. It's the ER, the emergency. We go to them in an emergency. I crash my car. I go to them. I get a medical bill. I go to them. Somebody in my family dies. I go to them. They're who we go to in an emergency. We, as the customers are the D we are dependent upon them. We rely on them to take care of our ER emergency. So slow down when you're reading your questions and make sure you're paying attention. Did they ask about 
insured or insurer. And that's why I speak like this. I speak like this on purpose because you're going to take your exam and you're going to hear it in your head. I want you to read the question the same way I do. What value does the insured da, 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 bring? <laughs> because it's going to make you pay attention and make you choose the right answer because you're focused correctly on the customer by saying insured. You know, add an emphasis. That's a memory trick. Add an emphasis in there. Make sure you're reading the question correctly so that you're choosing the correct answer. So many times it's a misread that causes you to fail. A misread that causes you to miss the answer. And, and I've seen it. I'll sit with people and I'll have them take a test in front of me and I'll hear them like read the question and they read it wrong. I'm like, slow down, read that sentence again. What does it say? And then they read it and they go, oh, I'm like, yeah, slow down. Take time reading the question. In fact, you should spend more time reading the question than overthinking the answer. If you read the question solidly, then it becomes much easier to choose the right answer. So spend more time reading the question and paying attention to what are they actually asking me than you sit there, well, is it A or is it B? I don't know, oh my God. And by the way, always trust your gut. Just trust your gut, go with your first instinct and, and move on. <clears throat> and I've seen that too. It's so weird. One of my first, um, when, back when I wasn't as popular, <laughs> I had some one-on-one -on -one clients and um, she was taking the test in front of me and I would see her like hover and she would like, ah, I'm like, she would hover over the right answer. And then she would think, 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 think. And then she would change her answer and she'd get it wrong. And I'm like, girl, you had it right the first time. Why did you overthink and overanalyze? You should have gone with your gut. Just stick with your gut and move on. All right, next question. Once you remember the ER, and I'm reading a comment. Once you remember the ER and the ED, you should read the question multiple times. Instead of insurer, I read it as client. Instead of insurer, I read it as company. Yes, company. Uh, client or customer, either way. Yeah, customer might not be such a good word because it comes with an ER. Client is a little bit better. <laughs> I like that. I might start using that. Um, can be renewed till 65, no premium increase. Ooh, okay. So I think this one's a little bit more health-based than life-based, but um, this is talking about a policy is, so under the rights of renewability, right? So we talked about one of the provisions is rights of renewability. And it will either say if you're allowed to new or, or not allowed to renew or what the rules are for renewal. Under rights of renewability, you're gonna see one of these and there's a couple other ones. But the two main ones they ask you about, the most testable ones are gonna be guaranteed renewable, which is in red, and many of you selected that one, and then non-cancelable. But the answer here is actually non-cancelable. Guaranteed renewable and non-cancelable are almost the same. Both of them can be renewed till 65. They're, they're saying the same thing, guaranteed renew. It must renew, non-cancel, can't be canceled, AKA it's gonna be renewed. So both of them are saying the same thing in that regard. Both of them go to age 65. The reason 65 is because like, if you think about a disability policy, if you have a disability policy and you get disabled at, you know, by the time you're 65, you can get social security retirement. So they cut off the age at 65. Now, the next, the biggest difference between guaranteed renewable and non-cancelable is the premium. That's the one biggest difference. Both of them are, can be renewed. Both of them go to 65. But the difference between guaranteed renewable and non-cancelable is that the premium. A non-cancel is also no increase. And that's what I love about the word 
non-cancelable. It's got a no at the beginning, no cancel, no increase, no cancel, no increase. A non-cancelable policy cannot see an increase on the premium. There is technically an exception. The only way they're allowed to increase the premium is if they told you about it in advance. So if they have, if you buy your policy and it says in five years, this policy will increase by $20, they're allowed to do that. But they have to tell you about it in advance and, and it has to be told to you on the day you get the policy. They can't just suddenly change their mind down the road and say, oh, we're going to increase it. That would be illegal. They're not allowed to do that. So when you, but, but don't worry about that so much. That's like rarely if ever tested, but I want to just put that in there because technically, technically there can be a premium increase, but only if they tell you at the start of the policy. So no, so non-cancelable is no cancel. You no, you cannot cancel and no, you cannot increase my premium. Guaranteed renewable does allow an increase. However, there's a little asterisk there. On a guaranteed renewable, they can only increase on a class basis, class basis. What that means is they have to look at the entire group of people, not individually. So if like you yourself had like 20 million claims, they're not gonna raise your premium just because you had a bunch of claims. But if the rest of the, if, if everybody in your class had a lot of claims, they, they would raise it. So it's not individual based. Car insurance is very, can be very individual based in a sense where if you have a lot of car accidents, your premium will definitely increase. With health insurance, uh, not so much. So guaranteed renewable is saying that it will go to 60, it, it can be renewed, it'll go to 65, and there can be premium increases, but on a class basis only. Non-cancelable is no cancel, no increase. And it's good till 65. And again, I make a chart of these in my teaching classes to help you separate the two and to get um, to be able to specifically memorize them. And by the way, feel free to put any questions in the chat box. I am watching the chat box. Um, so that I can respond to any questions. All right, next up. I pay my policy monthly premium. My grace period is how long? Okay, <clears throat> this one, um, so grace period is true between both life and health. For life, you wanna remember the grace period is simply 30 days. Life is 30, 31 days. Health insurance actually changes the grace period based upon your mode of premium payment. The mode is how often you pay. So with, with health insurance, you could pay weekly, you could pay monthly, you could pay biannually, quarterly, or annually. And in health insurance, your grace period depends upon your mode of premium payment. So with monthly, the grace period is always 10 days. So, uh, and, and the memory trick with that, and again, life insurance is always 30. It's only health that has different grace period days. So, in health, you want to remember seven weekly, 10 monthly, 30 all other. So if the grace period for health is seven weekly, 10 monthly, 30 all other. And all other includes biannually, quarterly, annually. So anything basically less than monthly is 30 days. So again, health insurance grace period is 10 monthly, sorry, seven weekly, 10 monthly, 30 all other. Yeah, and I hope most of you who chose 31 are on the life side because that would be true on the life side. All right, Carol, did you have a question? You unmuted yourself. No, I'm sorry. No problem. All right, just wanted to check in. Okay, um, so Daniel, how do I know this question is either life or health? 
in, in life, it, it's always 30, 31. Life is always 30, 31. So it would say life insurance. This test is specific to health. So it doesn't say on health insurance um, because this is a health test. So that's why it doesn't specifically say, but on your state exam, it's either going to say life or health. Okay. You'll know the difference. They'll tell you the difference. All right. Next one. Tells me the number of days I have to submit evidence of a loss. Ooh, okay. So um, this is falling under claims procedures. So this is a health question, by the way, um, specific to health, not life. Claims procedures is a bunch of different provisions all together. And there is notice of claim, claims forms, proof of loss, time payment of claims, payment of claims. And this one is specific to proof of loss. And the easiest trick here, evidence, proof, evidence, pro Daniel got it. <laughs> evidence, proof, evidence, proof. Okay. The word evidence is proof. Proof is evidence. Evidence is proof. So when they talk about days that you have to submit evidence, that's simply proof. Okay. Notice of claim is simply how many days do I have to tell them that I had a claim, not submit evidence. The notice is not like official yet. You're not submitting anything. You're not proving anything. You're simply letting them know, hey, I broke my leg. I had to go to the hospital. It's, notice of a claim is simply informing the insurer that a claim is coming. You're let, And then they get prepared for it and they get the paperwork for it. Proof of loss is the official evidence. So whenever you see evidence in the question, they're looking for proof of loss. Great job, Daniel. Perfect. Evidence, proof, evidence, proof, evidence, proof. When they discover this, the insurer will adjust the benefit. This is true for life and health. Yes, perfect. Okay. So this is a life and health question. And it's under what is called misstatement of age or gender. Sometimes they'll have misstatement of age, sometimes misstatement of age or gender. Same, same. The key thing about this is that apparently, and I learned this from another insurance agent, is that back in the day, a while ago, I don't know, or even maybe still today, I don't think we have as much of a problem with this as maybe back then. But men would always claim to be older because they wanted to be smarter and age is wisdom. So men would say that they were older and then women wanted to be younger. So they would lie and say they were younger. Okay. So insurance companies were like, these freaking people are always lying about their age. <laughs> so they decided to not make it a thing like to not like, oh my God, you lied about your age. We're canceling. It can also just be a common error where somebody transposes. Like, let's say you're 32, but somebody wrote 23, right? They accidentally transposed your age. So what the insurance companies decided to do is they just created this provision that basically said, if we had your age wrong, we're not going to cancel you. We're not going to shame you. We're not going to send you away. We're simply going to adjust the policy to the correct age. So like, and it's not important to know the math. Life insurance gets a little bit more detailed about what happens. Health insurance, not so much. The main answer though is simply adjust. As soon, as soon as you see misstatement of age, you're looking for an answer that talks about adjusting the benefit. If 
if they misstated their age, what will happen? Adjust the benefit. Misstatement of age, adjust. Misstatement of age, adjust. Misstatement of age, adjust. They will simply adjust it according to the correct age, okay? And again, this is true for both life and health. Uh, policy, application plus policy plus riders and amendments. What does that mean? This is a life and health question. Okay, <clears throat> great job, guys. You almost all got this. So the entire contract is a provision that says the entire contract is the policy plus the application that was used to get the contract. So sometimes they'll say policy plus app. It's probably the most common way they'll say it. Now, um, at policy plus app is the correct answer and the most succinct answer. Sometimes they will say policy plus app plus riders and amendments. The thing is, is that riders and amendments are part of the policy. They're not separate from the policy. They're just pieces of it. It's kind of like saying I got a, a pizza with pepperoni and onions and mushrooms. It's all pizza. It's just saying you got extra stuff on it. Uh, so be prepared for the entire contract to either be the answer of policy plus app or policy plus app plus writers plus addendums. Either way, it's the right answer. I get 90 days to submit this. This is a health question. Ooh, all over the board for this one and nobody got it right. So proof of loss is 90 days. Proof of loss is 90 days. Notice of claim is 20 days. Claims forms is 15 days. And time payment of claims is generally immediately. Proof of loss is the only one that's 90. So let me tell you a little funky story that'll help you remember this, okay? And it teaches you actually a couple of concepts. So let's say that um, the claim that you're submitting is that your arm got cut off, okay? So let's say you were in a freak accident, your arm got cut off. I just watched the movie Avatar and in one of the scenes, the guy got his arm cut off because he got caught under like a, a metal strap or whatever, okay? So freak out, bowling machine, uh, freak farming, whatever, okay? Your arm got cut off. Now, let's say your, your arm is cut off and you're drinking 90 proof liquor to ease the pain, okay? If my arm gets cut off, I'm drinking 90 proof liquor to ease my pain. Now, another concept that the story goes along with is um, technically before the proof of loss. So the order of claims, the order of claims procedures is one, I call the insurance company to tell them I lost my arm. That's notice of claim. They then have to send you claims forms, paperwork to fill out. They have 15 days to send it to you. You filling out that paperwork is what proof of loss is. So proof of loss is you filling out the claims forms and mailing them back in and you have 90 days to do that. Now, one potential test question that you may get is, what happens if the insurer fails to send you the claims forms? Does that mean they get to just not pay the claim? They didn't give you the paperwork to, to fill out so they can go, ha ha, we don't have to pay you? No. As long as the customer is still, is still submits evidence, they have to pay the claim. They can't just, oh, sorry, we didn't send you the paperwork, so we're not going to pay you. 
you as a customer still can submit evidence. So another little weird, stupid thing about this story is let's say that you're drinking your 90 proof liquor and you're like, they won't send me those claims. For oh, wait, you only got one arm. They won't send me those claims forms. And so I'm just going to mail my arm to them. Then they'll know that I lost my arm. And as long as you're submitting evidence, they have to pay the claim. Now, please don't actually mail a body part. It is illegal to do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it is technically supposed to be written. <laughs> so Daniel, like, this is my lost arm <laughs> right on a Sharpie. <laughs> Sorry, that's so morbid. But anyway, you, you won't forget this now. Okay. Sometimes I tell stupid stories just so that you'll remember them. Right. So that is answering a couple of questions. Um, and Daniel even said it was on his test. Okay. So they are supposed to send you claims forms, which become the proof of loss. Once you fill them out, if they fail to send you the claims forms, you as the customer still can submit evidence. And like Daniel says, it does need to be written. Okay. So it does need to be written evidence, but as long as you submit written evidence, they are obligated to pay the claim, whether they failed to send you the claims forms or not. But the key takeaway here too, is that proof of loss is 90 days, 90 days to prove the loss. Um, and it's 90 days from the date of the loss. Well, now you're gonna get it right. <laughs> now you'll get it right, Daniel, you got this. Okay, so again, 90 proof liquor, cause I lost my arm. I've got 90 days to prove I lost my arm, okay? All right, next question. Uh, to change an irrevocable beneficiary, I need. This is a life and health question. Consent. Yes. Okay. This is a life and health question. And my brain also went on a tangent. I'm starting to think when I, because I, I had to be thinking about how I messed up earlier with the grace period being, or the free look period being 30 days. I'm starting to think that Massachusetts is the one that's actually 10, where long-term care is typically 30, but Massachusetts is 10. So if you've been watching the video this long and you're in Massachusetts, I probably super messed that one up. But anyway, Back to this question. Sorry, I had to go off on that tangent. Okay, so irrevocable beneficiary. This is both a life and health question. A beneficiary is the person who will receive the policy payout if the insured dies. And you can be primary and secondary, which just means first or second. And then you can also be revocable, irrevocable revocable, revocable means I can take you out. I can change you as the beneficiary. If I can revoke you as the beneficiary, it means I can change you and, and take you off. If you are irrevocable, I am not allowed to change you. I can't just remove you as the beneficiary. The only way I can remove you as the beneficiary is if you give written consent that says yes, you are, you are, you can move me off of the beneficiary. I sign my name. I give you permission. So revocable requires consent or irrevocable requires consent. Irrevocable requires consent. Irrevocable requires consent. Great job, guys. Awesome. It says both parties bring value to each other. We talked about this one. What says both parties must bring value to the other party? Yes, consideration. Cons you consider what I want. They consider what I want. We consider each other's, what each other's want, and we bring that value to each other. Hannah also in the chat box had a recommendation. She says, think of revocable as a redo. You can redo the beneficiary. You can change them. Irrevocable is no redo. <clears throat> All right. Oh, and then with consideration too, so... Daniel put value equal money equal consideration. Yes. 
Consideration is value. Value is money. It's either premium or, or promise to pay. Pay is money. What value does the insurer -er, -er, er bring? What value does the insurer -er bring? Perfect. Yes, the insurer brings the promise to pay. That is what we get. Insurance gives us peace of mind. If something were to happen, they will pay. But if nothing happens, they ain't paying. <laughs> it's a promise to pay if something happens. So the insurer brings the promise to pay. Great job, guys. Everybody got that correct. That's awesome. Uh, fraud is always contestable. What says that? And this is health only, by the way. Ooh, okay. So this is a tricky one, especially if you're doing both the life exam and the health exam. There are two things that are kind of similar, but a little bit different. On the life exam, you have what is called, uh, oh shoot, I just lost it. Time limit on certain defenses, incontestability. Okay. On the life side, you have something that is called incontestability. Incontestability. See how the word says fraud is always contestable? Incontestability, life insurance actually says, you can get away with a lie. Fraud is a lie, right? If you're committing fraud, you're lying. Now on life insurance, you, you can lie and, is, and, and both, and that's the thing that's, so, so life insurance, it's incontestability. Health insurance, it's called time limit on certain defenses. So it's a very similar provision, but they're not quite the same. And the thing that is the same though, is that, there is a two-year period. And what that means is when you start the policy and for the next two years, if they discover that something you put on the application was wrong or a mistake, they can deny the claim in the first two years only. And that is true for both life and health. So like on the insurance application, if they said, did you ever have cancer and you put no, and in the first two years you file a claim for cancer and, and the notes say, this is a reoccurrence, they'll go, oh my gosh, we can deny the claim. Now, and that may have been a mistake or an outright lie, doesn't matter. If they discover it in the first two years, they can deny the claim. And this is true again for both incontestability and time limit on certain defenses. Now, the difference though, between life insurance incontestability and health insurance time limit on certain defenses is that in life insurance, you can lie after the two years. What I mean by that is if they find, if on life insurance, let's say you did have cancer in the past, let's say you have cancer right now and you apply for life insurance and you lie and you say, I don't have cancer. Like, let's say like it runs in your family. You, you go to a family doctor who confirms it for you, but he doesn't put it on his medical records. So there's no, but you know, you know, you have the cancer, but you, you hide it off of your medical records. You apply for life insurance. As long as you don't put in a claim, as long as you don't die for two years, they will pay the claim. Even if they find out that you did lie on life insurance. With health insurance, at any point they discover that you lied, they can deny the claim. And in fact, they can even cancel the policy. So that's the difference between incontestability on life insurance and time limit defense, time limit on certain defenses in health insurance. Is that on the health side, you can't get away with a lie. Life insurance, you can lie. Lie, lie life, it's almost, almost a fraud. Look at that. So life, 
allows fraud and you can lie. As long as you can wait two years, life insurance allows a lie. Okay, life insurance allows a lie if you can wait two years before submitting that claim. Health insurance says if we ever catch you in a lie at any point, one year in, two years in, three years in, 10 years in, if we catch you in a lie, we can always deny the claim. Uh, well, actually, Hannah, so as she said, as long as it's not material misrepresentation for life. Actually, <laughs> as long as it's after the two-year mark, they don't, at least on the exam. So there's always real world and like test world. And on the test world, on the testing side, you can lie on a life insurance application so long as you can hold out for two years. And then it's like, whatever, kind of like suicide. You may have the intention of, I'm going to buy life insurance, commit suicide. So my family gets money. You got to hold out for two years. Otherwise they won't pay the claim. Okay. So be careful with, especially if you're taking both life and health together. Uh, and it could be a test question. Time limit on certain defenses is similar to incontestability because they are almost the same, but they're slightly different in that life insurance, you cannot lie, health insurance, sorry, life insurance, you can get away with a lie after the two year mark. Health insurance, you can never get away with a lie. I mean, you might get away with it, but if they discover it, they can deny the claim. Yeah, and, and again, I uh, the suicide thing, I don't, make, I don't mean to make light of that or whatever, um, but that's that's a way to memorize it too because that that could actually be a test question that we might actually see here in a minute is what is the suicide clause and the suicide clause says that if you commit suicide and that's on the life insurance side if you commit suicide in the first two years they will not pay the claim they will refund the premium and cancel the policy as if it was never written if you commit suicide after two years they will pay the claim as normal there are some states that have different rules. Like I think one of the states has a three-year suicide, but most states are two years. All right, next question. I missed my payment, but I am still covered. What does that mean? Grace period. Yes, exactly. That is the grace period. So <clears throat> time limit, I'm sorry, grace period. If, if you miss your payment, but you're still covered, you're in the grace period. And if you're in the grace period, they will pay the claim. Now they will do another provision called unpaid premium where they subtract your premium from the payout. Like if you have a life insurance policy that pays out, you know, uh, $10,000 if you die, but you were in the grace period and your premium is $100, they will send you $9,900. They will subtract what you owe them from the claim payout. That is called unpaid premium. I pay my policy premium semi-annually. My grace period is how long? This is a health question. Thirty-one days, yes. So remember, seven weekly, ten monthly, thirty all other, thirty-one, thirty, whatever. I think it's thirty. Um, but for life insurance, it's it's uh, thirty. Is it thirty-one? Ten, seven weekly, ten monthly, thirty all other. It might be thirty-one all other for life insurance, but they probably won't trick you and put thirty and thirty-one together. They'll probably have something like this: seven, twenty, ten, and thirty-one. There are some things I need to brush up on, <laughs> make sure with the life and health. I've been so property casualty based because that's my biggest customer base right now. I got to brush up on my my life insurance, my life and health insurance. This is a good, good game. I got so, there's so much knowledge up in my my head. You know, sometimes it gets a little. So Chantel says thirty. So 
Yeah, it could be a little typo here. That's possible. All right. I need to call and inform the insurer of a loss within 20 days. Inform them. I need to give them a what? Notice, yep, informing them is, is notifying them. So if I am sending, if I am like, hey, I got my arm cut off. Hey, I got sick. Hey, I had to go to the hospital. You're just letting them know. And you have to do it within 20 days of the date that it happened within reason. If you're in an accident and you're like knocked out, you're in a coma and you're not able to do anything and you don't submit the claim within 20 days, they're not gonna hold that against you. So it's 20 days within reason. If you're able to submit the claim, do that. But if you're incapable, they're not going to hold it against you that you didn't tell them within 20 days. But most of the time, the hospitals and the doctors are doing it for you. Can renew till 65, increase premium on a class basis only. Guaranteed renewable. So remember, we have non-cancelable and guaranteed renewable. Both of them say that they can renew. No cancel means you can renew. They're both good till 65, but the difference between guaranteed renewable and non-cancelable is that non-cancelable is no increase. Guaranteed renewable does allow an increase, but on a class basis, only not on an individual basis. Oh, and Hannah, you said, can we do another? That's what's tricky about life and health is people, there's so many people who are doing separated ones. Some of you are just life. Some of you are just health. <laughs> um, but the reason I chose this test is because there is a lot of overlap. There's way more overlap um, for provisions on the health side than there are provisions on the life side. So it's a little bit tricky, but um, again, I have so few of you doing life and health compared to property and casualty that trying to have a bunch of free game nights is a little bit tricky, but you have the ability to play these games yourself. And there are a lot of life ones. <clears throat> so everyone, and I'll drop the link in, my, in the chat box. And it's also on my, my um, insuranceexamqueen.com. There's a little tab called free resources. And under free resources is my Kahoot link. Now to play the Kahoot yourself, you do have to make an account with Kahoot. So you you like you click on my profile, you click the game you want to play. And in order to play, you have to log in. So you're going to click uh, create an account student. And then they're going to try and make it seem like you have to pay something, but you don't. There's a little option to always skip. So you're going to skip it. And then you got to click play. And then you got to you got to log in on your phone. You got to be the game host and the player at the same time. But you can play these games yourself. Who can change the wording of a policy? <clears throat> All right, so this one's a little bit tricky. Um, now, I throw in the word wording. This may actually show up as a test question that says, who is allowed to change a policy? I don't like that because you probably think that you can because like you can change your car insurance. You say, I bought a new car. You're now changing the policy. So as a customer, we can change it. We can add coverages. We can remove coverages. What, what they're asking though, when they're saying who can change a policy is they really are asking who can change the wording. Who is allowed to go in and say, instead of saying this sentence, I wanna delete it and put this sentence. And another thing about this too is once the policy is bought, it's not 
you don't, you can't, they can't change the wording. They can add or remove coverages as long as both sides agree. But the thing is, is that policies, they're actually called forms and you have a form and once you buy it, it becomes a policy. But until you buy it, it's like a, a blank, it's like a written up contract with no name on it. So like when, when if, if United Healthcare sells a disability policy and you buy it and I buy it and they buy it, we all have the same contract. But each policy is unique because mine is for me and yours is for your you and theirs is for them. But the contract itself is the same. And so what they're saying is who's allowed to change the wording in that contract to be a different contract? And it's only an executive officer of the company is allowed to change the way that a contract is written up. And in fact, if they do change the way the contract is typed up, they have to submit it to the Department of Insurance. So this one, so, so Daniel, if, if this is, again, this is what's weird about this question. A customer can add or remove coverage. You can add a rider, you can add an amendment, but they're talking, it's, it's kind of hard to explain the difference between a form and a policy. I think I did a YouTube video on completing the app where I kind of talked about this. Like you've got to think of an insurance policy as they're pulling it off the shelf. So like, like it's typed up, it's ready to go, but it's not official until they like put your name on it. What we're saying here is this contract that's available to be purchased. Who can change the words on that? And it's only an executive officer. Because like every time, when an insurance company wants to offer a policy for sale, they have to approve it with the Department of Insurance. So before it's a policy, it is a form. Before it's a policy, it is a form. And they submit that form to the Department of Insurance. And it'll say, we cover this, we cover that, we cover this, we cover that. And it only becomes a policy when someone buys it and puts their name on it. So we're not saying who can change, who can change a policy as in adding and removing coverages. They're asking who can change the officially typed up contract that was submitted to the Department of Insurance as a policy that would be available for sale. So kind of a weird thing, <laughs> but if they if you get this question on the exam where it says who who is allowed to change a policy? They're not asking who is allowed to add or remove coverages. They're asking who can change the official contract wording. Only an executive officer. So kind of weird, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, and don't it's it, it won't make a break if you get this one wrong. But when they're talking about changing a contract, changing a policy, only an executive officer can change the wording within the contract not an agent, not the insured. When they, they'll they talk about writers and amendments as adding or removing, which is not the same as changing. It's weird, but that is a distinct difference between add and remove versus change. Because even if I'm gonna add a waiver, I'm gonna add a, an amendment, my amendment, if, if, if you and I have the same type of disability policy and both of us want the waiver of premium, we will get the same waiver of premium. It will be typed up exactly the same. My waiver of premium won't look different than yours. It's an officially typed up document and I'm simply, simply adding it to my contract. The wording within that officially typed up document can only be changed by an executive officer. I can't say, well, can you delete this sentence and rewrite this instead? As a customer, I can't do that. So hopefully that makes sense and lands. It's kind of hard to explain without a visual representation, um, but only an executive officer can change a policy, not add or remove coverage. A customer and, a, and an insurance agent can do that. But we're talking about it changing the official words, the way that the contract is typed up. All right, next question. Allows the insured to review their policy and return for a full refund. This is life and health and everyone should know this one.
free look period. Yep, the free look period. You can return it for a full refund. Free look. I get to look at it and it's free to me if I decide to return it. Sometimes also known as right to examine. That's another way. The free look is the most common name, but sometimes they call it right to examine. Tells the insurer by when they need to pay a claim. When, what is when? So this one is a health question. It's part of the claims procedures. And there's two, there's time payment of claims and then payment of claims. Time is when. It's telling the insurer by when do they need to pay? How quickly do they need to pay? Payment of claims is simply who do we pay? Do we write the check out to you or the doctor? But time payment of claims is by when they need to pay. I pay my policy premium weekly. My grace period is how long? Seven days. Yep. Seven weekly, 10 monthly, 30 all other. Seven weekly, 10 monthly, 30 all other. And sometimes I think with the 30, 31, that it, it is whatever the month is. Because technically, uh, uh, it is basically saying if you pay yearly, you have a grace period of a month. So that's why I think the 30, 31 doesn't really matter. It's just, it's definitely 30, 31. It's one of those. <laughs> Allows the insurer to cancel at any time. What renewability clause is that? Cancelable. So this is a health question. And this is coming from um, rights of renewability and the different types of policies. Cancelable is actually illegal in most states. And that's usually the test question that cancelable is not even allowed. But cancelable is a type of policy where the insured is allowed to cancel at any point. Now they're not allowed, like if you file a claim and they cancel it the next day, they still have to cover the claim. They can't deny a, a filed claim, but they can cancel it after you file but they still have to cover the claim that you filed for. Um, and then usually cancelable policies are also called period of time policies. So like there's a, you can have like a travel accident that covers you while you're traveling. And if you get into an accident while they're traveling, they'll pay for your hospital bills. And those are only good while you're traveling. So sometimes cancelable is also known period of time. <clears throat> All right, yeah, if you can connect to an internet source, that would be good. Sorry that it paused. All right, so we reached the end of the game. Hannah, you're in third place, congrats. Second place, YD, awesome. And first place, A, yay. <laughs> A for first place, that's awesome. All right, so we're gonna quit that. All right, we've got 15 minutes, so let's do a little life one. Oh, I have one for life. I think I have more than that. It's just not in the folder. All right, we're going to start this. This is my old branding. I have since upgraded my branding a little bit, <laughs> but same rules to join. If you are health only, you can you know dip out at this point, unless you want to just stick around, have more questions. Um, but we're going to do a life one. We won't necessarily finish this test because, um, again, I my mouth does. I do have the ulcers on my tongue right now. And so I do want to take a break from talking and whatnot. But and I also need to eat lunch or dinner or whatever. But we'll we'll use up the last 15 minutes for life insurance.
All right, anyone else trying to log in? Unmute yourself, speak up. Let me know, otherwise I'm gonna hit start. All right, I'm hitting start. And if you end up getting kicked out, um, again, you, you can join back in and the game pin will be at the bottom of the screen. Um, or you just follow along with us, write your answer down, pay attention. All right, let's get started. Term insurance premiums are. Level, term insurance premiums are level. And what that means is they don't change. So if your term insurance premium on the first month is $20, it'll be $20 on the second month, $20 on the third month, 20 every single month. Level premiums means they do not change. They will not go up, they will not go down, they will stay exactly the same. Level is same. If it is level, it is the same. It'll never fluctuate. So term is always level. Premiums. Term can actually be increasing and decreasing policies. In fact, term offers increasing level and decreasing policies. But no matter what type of term policy you have, the premium is always level. So if, if it's $28, it'll always be $28. If it is 15, it'll always be 15. The premiums never change on term insurance. Which policy is temporary? Term life, yes. So term is temporary. Term is for a period of time. Term is for a set period of time. So term is temporary. It doesn't go on forever. Great job, guys. Which policy is permanent? Whole life, whole life. It'll go for your whole life. Now your life is not technically permanent, but the policy will be permanent for your whole life. So whole life is known as permanent. Term is known as temporary. Which policy has a death benefit that does not change over time? Level, yes. So level is same. So if you have a term policy uh, or yeah, a level term, it'll always be the same. The death benefit will not change. An increasing term says the death benefit will get higher the longer the policy is in place. A decreasing term says that the death benefit will go down over time, but a level term says the death benefit will be the same the whole time. Now, set term is a made up word. Like I said at the beginning, 
they there's there can only be one right answer. And so sometimes the other three choices are completely made up words, completely made up acronyms meant to throw you off. But level term is one of the official names of a term policy. What policy covers more than two people and pays out on the first debt? Joint life, yes. So there are two policies that you learn about that cover two or more people. You have joint and survivorship. And J is before S. J is first in the alphabet. And J is first to die, meaning that survivorship S is second to die. So in a joint life policy, that's where you're covering two or more people. As soon as the first person dies, they will pay the policy out. Survivorship is covering two or more people, but it will not pay out until the second person dies. So when you think of joint life, think of a younger family where they have children, um, where, where like if, if a husband and a wife get a joint life and they have little kids, as soon as the first spouse dies, they wanna be able to give all the money to the remaining, the surviving spouse, the one still alive, to raise all the children. Think of survivorship as an older couple and they're both elderly, their kids are adult children and they don't need the money to take care of anybody when, when the first person dies. The survivorship is more often used to help pay the tax burden when the couple dies. Like let's say you're a wealthy family and you have a beach house and a boat that you wanna leave to your children. When you die and you give those things to your children, they're going to have to pay an inheritance tax on them. You can literally get a life insurance policy on it. Like you can get a survivorship that will pay out after both of you die, that will pay to your adult children, that will be enough to pay the taxes on the boat and the house. It's a way of like protecting assets. Not to say that every survivorship is purchased for that reason. It's just a very common usage. All the following are characteristics of a group policy except. This is actually life and health too, right here. Yes, okay. Um, so a group, Group insurance means that you're getting it like usually through your job, through your employer. And the key thing about group is that it is not individual. Your policies that you can buy are either from a group or individual, and they are complete opposites. Group in it, it's, it's like saying, it's like saying uh, McDonald's and Pizza Hut, like completely different realms, totally different things, right? You either get insurance as a group or you get it as an individual. When you get it in a group, you don't have to answer any medical questions, none. You can be terminally ill and be allowed to sign up because you're part of the group. Individually, you have to answer a ton of medical questions. And if you don't have a good health history, they can totally deny you. Now with group though, group, in order for an insurance company to offer group insurance to like a company, so like, Let's say we all work at McDonald's and we're going to get health insurance. We're going to get group insurance. The insurance company selling it to McDonald's would want to make sure that we are a big group. They want to keep the size of the group a certain size. They want to make sure that we're getting insurance for some other reason, not just because we want cheap insurance. Group is one of the cheapest ways of getting insurance because it works with based on the law of averages and it's just cheap premium all around. Some, some people will say, well, let's become, let, let me and my 10 best friends become a group so we can get cheap insurance. You're actually not allowed to do that. You have to be a group for some other reason first, like we all work at McDonald's, okay? And then the insurance company is gonna wanna analyze the financial strength of the group. Do they have the ability to pay this premium or not? 
Um, so those are, are all characteristics of group. This is an accept question, which basically is saying three of these things are true and one of them is false. And the false answer is the correct answer. So with accept, you're doing true or false. And you're looking for the false answer. You're looking for the one that is not true. And what is not true about group is that everyone has to answer individual health history. You don't. You don't have to answer any questions when it comes to group insurance. Yeah, and Hannah says you can't form a group for the sole purpose of insurance. That's correct. Now, legally, technically, there are some organizations that are allowed to do that. It's, there's, um, But again, there's a difference between real world and test world. <laughs> So test world, you have to be a group for some other reason first. If the insured can use a policy while alive, what does it have? Living benefits, yes. So if, if because again, this is a life test and life is, you die, right? Life insurance pays out when you die. But if you're able to use the policy while you're alive, it must have living benefits, benefits while you're alive. So living benefits and usually, and uh, Hannah just said cash value, that's that's true too. Um, but uh, this living benefits more refer to things like you're terminally ill. So let's say you get a diagnosis that says you're going to die in two years. If you have a policy that has living benefits, you can cash that policy. You can get some of that policy now. You can be able to use it now. Or let's say that you need a major surgery. Like let's say you need a kidney transplant or you're going to die. You can use your life insurance money to help fund your kidney transplant because there's like, well, we either pay her 60,000 now to get a new kidney or we pay her 100,000 when she dies. She's going to die if she don't get the kidney. Let's give her 60 grand to see if we can keep her alive, you know? So living benefits allows you to use your policy while you're still alive. Usually it's being terminally ill. It's um, terminally ill. You need a major medical life-saving treatment. Uh, you get confined to a nursing home. Like you lose your cognitive function, you get confined to a nursing home. Um, I think those are the major ones. Um, Chantel asked about annuities. Um, annuities are not life insurance. They're, they're separate. So annuities are all about being alive. You're alive and you need money. So life, annuities don't really have like a death thing on it. And this, I don't think I have any annuity questions on here. <clears throat> yeah, Hannah says annuity protects for living too long, right? So life insurance and annuities are the opposites of each other. Life insurance says, I'm worried about dying too soon and my family won't have enough money for when I die. Annuities say, I'm worried about living too long. And what I mean by living too long is I will spend all my money, I will have no money left and I will still be alive. How do I feed myself? So an annuity is what you have to give you a life income so that you never actually run out of money. That's what an annuity is for. What policy is based on the S&P 500? indexed equity index life. And by the way, remember earlier, we looked at the Alabama breakdown and they actually broke it up for us. And they said, when it comes to life insurance, the majority of questions, 11 and 18% of the tests, however they break that up, is gonna be about term versus whole. Whereas a very small three to five questions will be about adjustable universal variable equity index. So you're not likely to be asked a lot of questions. The one question I frequently have seen is equity index life S&P 500. 
You just want to know that. You don't need to understand it. You don't need to know what it means. You just need to say, if I see S&P 500, I'm picking equity index life. Or if I see equity index life, I need to pick the answer that says S&P 500. What policy covers more than two people and pays out on the second death? Second, S, second. Survivorship, yes. So you've got joint and survivorship, J before S, J is first to die, survivor is second to die. Technically, it's the last death. So like you could technically have a survivorship on five people and it would pay out on the last death, but it's always second to die on the exam. They never talk about it being more than two people. Which policy has cash value? Whole life, yes, whole life has cash value. You're saving your own money for your own death. And all that money is cash value that you can use while you're still alive. You could take a loan against it even. Which policy has a death benefit that does not change over time? Does not change. Level term, yes, level term. Level does not change. Level is same the whole time. Okay, so we're right at the eight o'clock mark. We made it halfway through this test. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it quits here. Um, Cause again, I mean, I do have my mouth holders, <laughs> but also it's, it's been here for two hours. I gotta go pee cause pregnant, gotta take a baby, gotta have some dinner. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Does anybody have any final questions? And like I said, this will be uploaded onto um, YouTube. So if you want to come back and rewatch it. So Isaiah asked about class on Monday. So um, that is going to be the listen and the learn. It'll be covering both life and health. Um, and I know specifically that I will be covering, if you are familiar with my silver, um, I'm going to be covering the things that are not in it. <laughs> so like videos that I haven't made videos of yet. That's what I plan to do for that lesson in the learn. So I'm dropping the link for you now, Isaiah. And it, if you do want to be careful, um, again, there are no recordings and there's no refunds. So if you don't show up, you miss it. So if you would like to wait, wait until the day, you know, for sure, you're going to be able to be there. Um, and that way you can, you know, you could be safe you know, and not lose out. Cause again, it, the refunds are difficult and then there's no recordings. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, there's probably more listen and learn scheduled. You can always check out my Calendly. Um, I do need to connect my website. I have a website for, for class series and I have a Calendly for live classes. I really need to merge them. But um, also my Facebook always has the updates for everything too. join my Facebook group. Um, Chantel, you said, is that preferred over silver? No, not necessarily. Um, both, honestly, which is why I say go with platinum because with platinum, you get everything. And silver is definitely the most tested topics. So like the listen and learn scheduled for this coming Monday, February the 20th is going to be um, topics that are, um, I mean, it's, I mean, everything is can show up on the test, but I just want to focus on things that I don't yet have videos for. Thank you so much for the session. It's very helpful. Congrats on the pregnancy. Thank you. When is the next free game night? Um, I don't currently have any on the schedule. So I've mapped out the month of February and I'm pretty sure the 20th is my last class for the month of February. So any new classes will show up in March unless I get a random, I feel like doing a game night night. Um, but I will tell you, I'm probably gonna be resting a bit until I can clear up these ulcers on my time. It's crazy. 
And it's not awful. Like, I mean, it sucks, but it's not awful, awful. It's not like, um, I mean, I'm, as long as I sit my, my peppermint water is fine, but I'm probably going to wait till I kind of clear that up before I do a lot more classes. I was almost tempted to like cancel the listen and learn, but it's not again, not like crazy painful, but I do want to get some more videos made. So, and like I said, I'll be releasing the gold soon. So, um, we only have one class series available for life and health right now. Well, two, technically silver and platinum. And platinum allows you to talk to me directly and you get all past recordings of any life and health boot camp I've ever done. And you get silver. Silver just gives you silver, which is about 20 to 30 hours of video. I think it's closer to 20. I keep adding a little bit to it, but I'm also gonna be modifying silver as well now that I'm making gold. And I hope to have a bronze as, as well for life and health. Thank you, Chica. Yes. Yeah. And as I, I, they like get better, like I don't feel ill. So that's good. Like my body is fine, right? Like I'm fine. It's just a painful mouth. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm definitely going to be one of those mothers like, you don't know what you did to my body. I had to suffer through this pain to have you. I had no idea that my my tongue would bliss out in like crazy ulcers from being pregnant. That is not something they warn you about. <laughs> and apparently it happens to about half the women, like it's hit or miss. You don't know if it's going to be you or not. Thank you so much, Hannah. All right. Okay. Any other test questions or anything? Any final comments? Okay. Well, hopefully I'll see you guys on the Monday listen to learn. And, um, the link for that is, um, in the chat box. And then also, um, my Facebook group always has everything, uh, at, on it. And then even if you were just to search me insurance exam queen, it'll probably show up, um, on Google as well. All right. Yes. And good luck, Liz. You're testing on the 27th. You got this. Yay. All right. Well, have a good night, everybody. I love you all. Sending you all the loves, all the vibes to pass your exam. Have an amazing day.